Okay boys and girls, I'm going to walk you through my um, passion project for graphing. I started off with the idea that I was going to graph Jason Statham films to see if they made more money as the years went on. So the first thing that I had to do is I had to go and find a list of his films, which I did on the Internet Movie Database, and then I put them into this spreadsheet. And so there you can see they are listed from the most recent films, oh sorry, actually the oldest film, which is Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, down to the Expendables, because that's the most recent one a year I could get um, reliable data on. I've put the year and I've put the box office. I got all of these box office figures, which is how much money that film has made from the same website, so I hope that I'm comparing similar data, that I'm not comparing, you know, one is only Australian box office and the other is American and another might be international. Because just like some of you made the mistake of comparing Celsius with Fahrenheit, which gives you a really wonky graph, you need to have, you know, apples and apples. So I took this gra data and I graphed it. And Miss um, Clitheroe is sitting here next to me, and I know that she knows what is wrong with this line graph, is that they, this is in fact not one thing changing over time. These are discrete events. And so this should not in fact be a line graph. I'm distorting the data. So I've unfortunately set myself up to not be able to do this project. So I then look at it as a column graph, which is what it should be. And it is interesting. He tends to be in films that actually don't make very much money to the extent that we believe that $20 million is not very much money, or he is a minor actor in films that make a great deal of money, because I think everybody would agree that $100 million is a great deal of money. But because I actually managed to put myself down something of a blind alley, I decided to start again on my project. So I started off and I found the data for what the population was in Australian states, and I could find them 1960, 1970, so once a decade. And I thought, well, I want to have them evenly spread out so that my, my graph is good. So I got all of that data there and I pasted it in. In fact, I used what I've been calling God's clipboard, my brain, and I copied them across. <coughs> and this is the graph that I got. I thought, that's really interesting. New South Wales just grows consistently. Uh, Victoria is pretty steady. Queensland's pretty steady. But there are some states where there's just very little growth at all. So that was just a simple graphing of that. But then I thought, I wonder what this means in terms of the balance of how much of the country each state makes up the population. So I went back to my data and I built this formula here, the sum. So this cell is adding up all those other cells. So this is the national population. And so I worked out what the total was for each year. And down here, what I've actually done, if you look, I've worked out the percentage. So what percentage of the national population was Victoria in 1960. So I took the Victorian figure, I divided it by the national figure, and then I times it by 100. Now if you need to help with this formula, firstly you could work it out, secondly you could ask your maths teacher, and thirdly you could ask me, because on a good day I'll be able to help you. So I worked this out and I was actually able to drag that formula across and that would work across the years. So I put it in for each state and then I graphed that. And this is where I actually think I've come to something interesting. New South Wales, as you can see on the top line, is in fact the most populous state and has the biggest share of the population, but it's dropping off. Victoria used to be more, more of the nation than it is now, and it's been quite steady since about 1980. Queensland has been on a steady increase in terms of how much of the nation it makes up. Uh, who's the dark blue? Western Australia, and probably that's a lot to do with people going over there for the mining. South Australia has been steadily declining, which Miss Clitheroe puts down to their prodigious murder rate, although I'm not sure if she's nodding vigorously. And she's apparently from South Australia, although apparently, which explains a lot. <laughs> That's her words, not mine, I should say, in case the lawyers should ever get hold of this. And um, and the bottom three, Tassie, ACT, and who is that line down the bottom? Oh, Northern Territory, ACT, and Tasmania have been steadily representing very little of the nation. You know, they're under 5%. Um, tiny amount of the population. So anyhow, that is my, that's my passion project. But what I want you to learn from it is you're going to have to go and find data and keep following at interesting places. And if you get yourself into a Jason Statham situation where you've gone down a road that doesn't get you something interesting or that actually does what you wanted it to do, just change tack. 
don't think, oh, well, then what movie star will I do? That whole graph was flawed. I needed to move to something where I was comparing apples with apples. So um, by all means, sing out, but this, this hopefully will help you.